There are a lot of decisions made about you and your body after you die. The weird part is you have absolutely no say in it because you're dead. So how many times a day do you think about death? Is it when you're in your car, when you're leaving your house? I started thinking about death a lot more the other day when I was talking to a friend of mine and she told me that she'd already started writing her will. My first reaction was, why are you writing a will at the age of 23? But then it got me thinking, who would I put on my will and why have I never actually thought about this? So let's look at the facts. Every year, the funeral industry makes about $17 billion off of death. We're at a point where the world is running out of places to put people who aren't even alive anymore. Is that really the way that I wanna go? There's so many different burial options that we never talk about and I really wanna explore them. So I'm going to explore three burial options at three different price points. <laughs> No, this is not worth the funerals, sorry. <laughs> but I am gonna be looking at three different burial options just to see which one kind of fits what I want. Yeah, this is really weird. So one of the things that's important to me is having a green burial. I don't see the point in taking up space on the earth when it can be used by the living to do something better. So I looked up this company, BioCern, which found a way to convert cremated ashes into trees. So I sat down with BioCern's CEO and founder to hear a few more details. BioCern is a biodegradable urn that has been designed to turn the remains of someone who passed away into a tree. So I could be any Same kind thing. of tree in the world? Yeah, you can be any kind of tree, plant, or shrub, or whatever you want to be, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of anything like, like this. this. I'm very used to just cemeteries because that's always been like the way that we've done things. We erase all those products like embalming, like caskets. Then instead of going two, three times per year to cemetery, it's more like a meditation. We're trying to tell people that death is just the process of life. So what happens if your family member is horrible at taking care of plants and they end up killing you again? In case that the tree dies, the ashes are still there, the biozone is still there, so you can replant. The biozone is designed like to be used with the ashes. Ashes by themselves are not a viable growth medium for, for a seed because they contain a lot of pH and that would burn the seed. At some point, the ashes end up being mixed with the soil and the earth itself because all of it biodegrades. Oh my God. So, I don't know why I'm so afraid of it. I feel like there's already ashes inside of it. Well, it just has two like parts. It has the lower cone and this capsule on top. And here you have two components, which are the cocoa peat soil and vermiculite, which is a mineral that retains water. You just need to like fill it up and place the kind of seed you want again, plant it if it was a, a normal tree. On your website, I saw a BIOS incube, a really technical version of the urn. So it's mostly a smart flower pot. To be able to plant the BIOS urn indoors, it merges with your phone with an app that lets you know when there is no battery, when there is no water, and where there is no temperature. Why do you think that BIOS and getting made into a tree is the best option. Because this is made of paper and cardboard. It decomposes really fast. Biosern is $145. There is not too many people who want to pay $10,000 for a funeral. We're a company that works to create products that make sense for people. There is a psychological component that helps you when you are growing something from the remains of someone who passed away. So the next place I visited was the California Science Center Body World exhibit. Bodies in an exhibit and you could actually see their muscles. Body Worlds has a donation process in which you can donate your body to science. It's definitely a different route that I'm willing to try. Welcome to the Body Worlds Pulse. This is a very special exhibition, in part because it's a display of real human specimens. Body Worlds, although it shows Corpses, so to say. It's all about life. It's all about you. And it really is a wonderful life lesson that you shouldn't miss. We have 23 full body specimens on display. They come along in very dynamic, lifelike and dramatic poses. All specimens on display are real and they are originating from a very special body donation program that our institute in Germany runs. Many people are just fascinated and love the idea to be part of it. Others, for instance, suffer from certain diseases and they would want future generations, future physicians to have a better idea of this disease. For instance, we have a smoker's lung and a non-smoker's lung and direct comparison. And if you really see that, how black the lungs are turned just from smoking. When you're standing in front of these specimens and all of a sudden recognize what an intricate and wonderful machine is inside you, and you really start thinking about your life and your lifestyle. What technology is involved in creating this and keeping these bodies intact? We need to stop decay. And that is done by simply injecting foam aldehyde into the blood vessel system. We take the skin away, reveal the muscles, the nerves and arteries and organs. 
once the dissection is done, we apply the process of plastination. Plastination is a vacuum process that allows us to exchange the tissue water against a polymer like silicone rubber. So each individual cell that contained water before is now filled with the silicone. And that renders the specimen dry, it is orderless, you can literally grasp it, it holds more or less forever. I'm considering the donation process of plastination, which is kind of scary to me. <laughs> Why do you think this is better than a lot of other options for like what to do with your body? Through the ethics committee and our work, we ascertained that the people who donated their bodies to Body Worlds knew just what they were donating their bodies for, and they were very interested in making sure that after they died that their bodies were preserved and used for educational purposes. The president of the Science Center has donated his body for plastination. Oh my gosh. It's somewhat a joke around here now. They, they say they'll never get rid of me. <laughs> what really convinced me personally was just watching how much it made a difference to people. We found 90% of the people said they learned new things in the exhibit. This person is of normal weight. These are all the internal organs. This person is obese. Here's that same abdominal wall. Here the fat has invaded everything and compressed all the organs. Over a third of the people, a year later, said that they had changed some aspect of their behavior because of seeing the exhibit, whether it was smoking, diet, exercise, and that's phenomenal numbers. I wanted to look at something that was more of a way to help my family members move on after my death. So the last place I looked at puts an artistic spin on the burial option. Welcome to the glass studio. Thank you. You want to learn about fabricating art glass? Yes, what does that mean? That is glass that's either fine art, functional art, plates, bowls, tiles, jewelry. But I also do memorial glass. That is a cool new aspect to my business within the glass studio. I mean, looking around, the things that you make, they're like actual art. Yeah, and they look like they have like a little universe inside. I take my mom to shows when I'm promoting this. I'm like, my mom's in here, you know? And, and she gets to go with me places. Would we be able to see your mom? This is Desiree. Ah, uh, Desiree. <laughs> This part here is her. So but that, that's the dichroic glass. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. The ashes end up as a, like an outline. How exactly do you make these things? The process to make these begins with grabbing a pole and sticking in the crucible kiln and get, getting a gather. We're going to get two small gathers, add color, then we add dichroic glass for sparkle. Shape it, twist it, add the ash, and then a clear cover, the final shaping and then breaking it off and putting it in the kiln. And I'm gonna be helping you, this yes. is gonna be fun. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever burned yourself? Actually, yes. <laughs> For you, I have my friend Poet. Aw. He's a friend of mine, Liza. This was her dog. If you really wanted me to do something nice with his ashes. So I'm gonna put a little bit out on the table here. We can roll it up. This is the glory hall. This is where we reheat the glass. This is set at 2150 degrees. How exactly did you go from making just glass things and sculptures to making memorial glass? I had a woman contact me about doing a paperweight with her husband and I didn't even hesitate. I've since made her, I'd have to say at least a dozen. She gives them to friends and family as gifts. The average medium sized round paperweight's about $175, $200. Mm. So if somebody's got 20 bucks and they want their little dog in a bead, I can do a $20 bead. Yeah? No. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's still, it's all, it's gonna be beautiful. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna just shape this a little bit before I go over to pick up the ashes. It's really rewarding. The reactions that I get from the people when they come to get their goodies are, are magical. People are hurting, you know, they just lost somebody that means a lot to them. And in the case of a, a pet, I mean, it's usually like their best friend. I feel good about what I'm doing. Sir. <laughs> Come, come with me, follow me. Okay. Okay. Well done. I, I don't know if I should high five. Yeah, did okay. Oh, <laughs> we did it. This is such a cool and different way of remembering someone. Maybe now I can be your glass apprentice. You qualify. I qualify? Okay. <laughs> okay, what option to pick? I think more ending on a light note. Like, luckily, for right now, I seem to have plenty of time to keep exploring. But what if I don't? That's a thing. But that's how you, that's how you end it. The funny thing is, I could do all of these burial options. I could donate part of my body to science. The rest of my body I could cremate and make into a tree and also make into art. Your death doesn't have to be an ending. You can use your body and use what you've got to enhance other people's lives. When the decision has to be made, you're not around to make it. 
The bottom line is death doesn't have to be a taboo thing to talk about. So talk about it.